I don't know why I wear these shirts. I insist on wearing these shirts that you can't even see. But I am wearing a shirt. <laughs> Hello, welcome back, hopefully. Uh, if you're new, hi. Not to toot my own horn, but often when I wear makeup, and I wear like a decent amount of makeup, I receive compliments that it just looks like my skin. Now, I'm aware that I have clear skin. I didn't for a long time. For a long time. Oh girl, I didn't. And you know what's funny? Even then, I got those compliments. So today, I'm here to tell you how, how you can make your makeup look like your skin. Even when you have to wear like a decent amount of it. Okay? So obviously the first thing is skin prep. Uh, I moisturized, I used Tatcha, is it the dewy skin cream? The light one, the like pore one? I used that. Uh, for my moisturizer, um, you can use a primer. You can go in with extra moisture. You just, you need to prep your skin. If your skin is dry and flaky in certain areas, then guess what? Your makeup's gonna be dry and flaky in those areas too. If you have an area of your face that has broken out and is super irritated, hydrate it like a motherfucker, okay? Hydrate it like a motherfucker. And what I mean is like put your heaviest moisturizer on it. First thing when you wake up in the morning, it might feel counterintuitive because you're like, it's a breakout, I can't put moisture on this. If you want it to look good with makeup on it, you gotta do this step, you have to. So super hydrating any of those areas that are ridiculously dry or you're going to really, really cover, you have to do it, you have to do it. Even if it's with um, like a balm or something, like first thing in the morning, just like hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. My primers kind of switch up uh, right now, I'm kind of into this combination. I've been using the Smashbox Primerizer with this YSL new primer on top, just because I tried it one day and I liked it. You gotta try a few things to see what works for you. Uh, I also really like the MAC Studio Radiance Primer, but I'm also a fan of just applying more moisturizer. So I'm gonna go in with this, the Primerizer first from Smashbox, which is nice and hydrating. So my skin is well hydrated, but I want extra, I want extra, especially around my eyes, areas that need a lot of coverage. So I'm gonna keep this to the tips that are going to make your makeup look like skin. If you really want like detailed, a detailed tutorial about like my uh, like contour techniques and all of that, any other video, dude, it's all up in there. You know what I mean? That is not what this video is for. Now I'm going in with a little bit of the YSL one which is a little bit more, it's also hydrating, but it's a little more smoothing. I'm a big fan of layers. And if you're new to my channel, you're really gonna learn that in this video. <laughs> the reason I'm making this video is because I, I often receive a lot of um, comments from people saying like, how do I not make my foundation look cakey? Uh, and I recently, again, not to shoot my own horn, but I recently was at an event and I received this compliment that my makeup just looked like skin and I was like, oh my God, I'm wearing, I'm literally wearing like four different foundations right now. <laughs> so I thought I would share. All right, we're glowing. We're glowing. All right, I just threw down some color corrector underneath my eyes because it's what I always do. Got to color correct those dark circles. Uh, I don't have a, a favorite perfume. What are you talking about? Foundation. I don't have a favorite foundation. I get asked this all the time and I'm like, I don't have one. I kind of just use what's whatever's like around. I've been using the Very Valentino one for a while now. I don't know, Estee Lauder, like I have a BB cream. Like I just kind of use whatever, honestly, color matches best. Um, today I'm going to use the Smashbox Always On Skin Balancing Foundation because I have been liking this. Uh, but I'm gonna mix it with a pump of Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. Now, the reason for that is mostly just because the color, I wanna, I wanna get as close to my like actual color as possible. Um, I'm not married to a foundation formula. Obviously, if you are, like if you have a specific foundation that you love, stick with it. The trick is really in the application. I personally love to use a damp beauty sponge to apply my foundation. I just think that that extra hydration it just does something for the skin. I don't know. It's just like, do you remember when people were um, pouring their foundation in like a cup of water and then picking it up with a foundation brush and applying it? You don't need to do that. You could just use a damp beauty sponge. If you're married to brushes, then like you can stick with it. Something that you can do is actually spritz a little bit of your like brush with a setting spray. Uh, so speaking of, if my sponge has been sitting for a little while and it needs to be rehydrated, I like to use a little bit of Mac Fix Plus to rehydrate it. You could just get it wet with some 
water, but I kind of feel like doing this makes my foundation look even better. Plus it smells delicious. And I like to just start in the center of my face because that's where the most like, red, I don't really get a ton of redness in my skin, but if I do, it's around my nose and my mouth. So I start there and then start to bring it out a little bit. And then once I feel like my foundation has gone as far as it's gonna go, then I will pick up a teeny little bit more, start in another area. So that's usually in between my eyebrows. And then again, start moving it outward. If you are someone who has acne or you have texture or you have breakouts, any of that. And I am very, again, I'm very aware that I have clear skin now. <laughs> I didn't always. Your girl didn't always. You want to think of your foundation as simply a color correction. It's a tone correction. You're creating an overall, like one overall tone of your skin. Like if you like a slightly more full coverage foundation, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. You can use a full coverage foundation, but that does not mean that you need to build a ton of it up. Even if you have acne or you have hyperpigmentation or any of that, go in with a light layer to begin with. Cause it's a hell of a lot easier to go in with a little bit and build it up than it is to remove after putting a lot down. So now that I have like a decent amount of coverage on my face, I'm just going to assess. Usually I need to apply a little bit more around here. I tend to neglect this area. I'm just gonna apply a little more. Same technique, applying it where I need it and then slowly bringing it out. Something you really need to keep in mind for this is you're just gonna have to take your time. When my skin looks its best, like if I'm going for full glam, like full glam, it'll take me two hours to do like skin, uh, eye look, everything. And you know what? I look amazing. Cause I took the time. I took the time to do it. So if you are someone who needs a lot of coverage and you want it to look like skin, you're just gonna have to make the time for it, my friend. Or you're not wearing as much makeup and you're doing like really small amounts because you're like Hailey Bieber or something, you know what I mean? Nice coverage, beautiful, still looking like skin. Still looking like skin. Now before I do my concealer, a setting mist. So I started using the Urban Decay D Slick just because like my skin tended to start looking like a little bit more oily. So I went for the D Slick one. Uh, the all nighter setting mist is like the waterproof one that's supposed to be like incredible. I haven't used that in a while to be honest, but I should probably pick it up. So what I'm gonna do before I even start applying concealer is just mist my face with this. This is a step that I do not do every single time. However, if I really need my makeup to last, if I'm going to some kind of an event or something and I wanna look impressive, I always do this. For my concealer, I'm using this concealer from Luna, um, which is, I believe, a Korean brand. Wait, is it Korean or Japanese? Yeah, it's Korean, which I've just been loving recently. So I'm keeping the same thing in mind. I'm being intentional with where I'm placing this, and I'm not applying too much. I have a good idea of the areas that need more coverage and brightening, and if I need to apply more later, I can. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I have, uh, once again, a damp sponge. This is the one, this is the top of the LC Cosmetics Velvet Sponge. I'm gonna rehydrate it with my mist. You wanna make sure that your sponge is damp and not soaking wet, because that will just end up like mixing weird with the makeup. Um, I'm making sure to really work it into the sponge, and then it'll end up making it patchy or not, not blending well. So I wanna make sure this is like hydrated enough, but not soaked. Using a very light hand, pressing that into the skin. And you can kind of see like my blending technique, technique here. I'm focusing it like right where I wanted it and then kind of like moving it out a little bit so that I'm blending it into my foundation. You always have the option to go back in with your foundation sponge or brush to blend around the edges. You can also turn your brush or sponge <laughs> in areas where you need to pick up a little bit more product if you put a little too much down.
Okay, still looking like skin. Nice and glowy and hydrated. Doesn't, doesn't look thick or cakey anywhere. Uh, once again, I'm gonna hit my face with the D-Slick. Make sure that you're holding it like back far enough um, so that you're not ending up with like a big splotch of setting mist in one area. And then I like to, I mean, this is the Patrick Ta fan. I just like to fan it, but you can use your hands. Now, if you watch my channel regularly, you're gonna be like, yeah, we know. Alex, we know how you do your makeup, okay? But if you're new, light layers of products. Now again, not completely necessary. Uh, it's gonna depend on the person, but if you find that your makeup ends up looking like very, very heavy, you might wanna consider going in with a very small amount of cream products first and then setting them later on with a powder version of that product. Going in with really small amounts of each of those products from cream all the way to powder is going to result in the effect that you're trying to go for without applying way too much. It creates like such beautiful like luminosity and depth to the skin. But again, it's a process, man. It's extra steps, so just keep that in mind. So to contour my face, I'm using Anastasia Beverly Hills Fawn Cream Contour. And I'm applying that with uh, my brush. If you know, you know. So I'm gonna pick up that product with the brush rather than like drawing it on. If you have a problem with your makeup looking really, really like heavy and you're drawing it on, you might want to try doing this instead or if you're having a very difficult time with blending. So I'm gonna slowly, slowly build this up on my cheeks and the rest of my face. You can kind of see it like start to come in and create dimension to the face, but I'm hardly putting any product down, like such a small amount. And then in any areas where I just feel like I wanna build it up a little bit more. And again, putting down a small amount so that I can go back in a little bit later and build it up if I feel the need to. And if you have areas that you need to spot conceal, areas on your face that you're just like, wait, what, are we gonna get to those at some point? <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna get, we're gonna get there, okay? Just bear with me. Now I'm going in with a little bit of cream bronzer. I'm gonna do the same thing. Small amount and build it up really slowly. Make sure you're holding your brush back pretty far on the handle. That way you're not like up here and, and like scraping on your skin. That's not gonna help your blending. It could end up making your application look really harsh. All right, I'm just gonna go in with my sponge around any edges and make sure that things are well blended so I don't have any like splotchiness or any areas that look like weird or not seamless. All right, I'm just going in and applying a little bit of blush to my cheeks. Same concept, light amounts, light hand. I'm applying it with a sponge this time. Before I go in with my setting uh, powder, guess what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna miss my face again. You don't have to do it this much, but like, honestly, it really just makes your makeup look like skin like crazy and it makes it last like crazy. Each time, just like a light mist. Same concept, concept? What? Same concept when it comes to powder. Now, a lot of you, if you watch my channel, you know that for an under eye setting powder, I like the e.l.f. Halo Glow. The reason for this is because it's very sheer. It also has a fine pearl in it, so it's luminous. Uh, I have, here, I'll give you a deep zoom into these this eye situation. Your girl's got a lot of lines and creases underneath her eyes. I just do, that's my anatomy. So if I go in with like a really heavy powder, it's just gonna end up looking like really crepey. But I don't know if you remember from the beginning, I got dark circles. Okay, so I wanna set this concealer so it's not going anywhere. So what I do for this is I will pick up a, dec like a decent amount of the powder, tap it off into the cap, pick it back up, tap it off, pick it back up, tap it off, so that I'm really like loading up the brush with the product. 
but not, not too much. Like I'm evenly distributing it throughout the uh, brush, bristles, bristles, hairs, brush hairs. Now I wanna make sure that I'm nice and blended and not crepey or creasy before I apply this. So I'm going back in with my sponge. You also have the option to mist this again if uh, it ends up looking like a little bit, if it got a little bit dry, lightly pressing the areas where I really need it, which is right here. Again, light amounts. If you need to ap apply more, you can, but it's very difficult to remove powder. <laughs> okay, removed a little bit of the shine, but it doesn't look too matte. What is this? Get off, get off my eye. Okay, for those others, okay, for those others, okay, for those other areas of the face that you're like, I needed more coverage now. We need to address, we need to address these little spots. You are going to mix your own concealer shade for that because we just did all of this work and it looks beautiful on our skin. So we don't wanna go in with just some random concealer that isn't going to match this like perfectly blended area. So for instance, I have this little spot right here that I wanna conceal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a slightly more full coverage concealer this is from Jekka Black. Now I did contour this area, so what I'm gonna do is put a teeny bit of Anastasia Fawn also on the back of my hand so that I can pull from that and create my custom concealer shade. I'm gonna use the Refer 03 brush to pick a little bit of that up and mix it with that concealer so that we have a perfect match. Now obviously in any lighter areas of your face, you can just use your like regular concealer. If you have an area where you, that you need to spot conceal where your blush is, then you can mix in a little bit of your blush. You're basically gonna be mixing your custom concealer so that you can get rid of that spot without disrupting all of the work that you already did. Cause I don't know if you have tried to spot conceal and then go with bronzer or contour or blush over that area. Not, not, not so bueno, not so bueno. This also allows you to build up heavy coverage in areas where you really need it. So if you have like a really dark spot and you really need to conceal that area, you can make that spot like super full coverage, but the rest of your face looks like skin. So no one's even gonna notice. Obviously I have a beautiful glow to my skin. However, this area is a little shiny. This area is a little bit shiny. So I'm going to use a setting powder. I'm gonna use Givenchy um, Prism Lead doesn't have to be this expensive, um, whatever powder you like. You just really want to keep in mind doing the same thing. So I pick it up on a brush. This is the Sigma Skin Perfector uh, F67. Tap it off in the cap. Pick it up, tap it off. Pick it up, <laughs> tap it off. This is specifically so that you're applying like a nice even amount of the powder, but you're not applying too much. I'm just going to gently press this in the areas where my skin is a little bit oily. And then just kind of like blending it into the rest of my face. And that kind of helps to make an area not look like so matte, and then the rest of your face look like really oily or something. Now those areas that you spot concealed, make sure that you are applying a decent amount of that powder so that that product does not move. It might look matte for a second or like really matte compared to the rest of your skin. Don't worry about that, we'll take care of it later. Okay, now we're gonna repeat all of the steps that we did on the face, but with powders. So it's gonna be the exact same thing. Super light amount of a powder bronzer gonna go in with a very light amount of powder contour and then the tiniest amount of powder blush. And remember, just like you did with your creams, you wanna be keeping a very, very light hand when you apply this.
All right, I just finished my brows, put a little lip liner on, and I'm gonna put my Auric Plush Ritual on my lips. Which, by the way, they gave me a coupon code just in case anybody is interested in this, the little green whale that people always ask about. Ooh, which matches my earrings and my outfit that you can't see so perfectly. Um, it's just my name, it's Alex, and it'll get you 10% off if you're interested, so. That's linked down below if, uh, if you've been interested in the plush rituals. All right, let's do a deep zoom so you can really see what the finished product looks like. Now, does that look like skin or does that look like skin? Because I feel like it looks like skin. <laughs> I wish you guys could see this in person. Cameras just like are tough, you know, because they get like so all up in my face. It's just a different thing when you really see it in person. It's fabulous. All right, now at this point, um, obviously I don't have highlighter and all of that stuff on because I'm gonna do another makeup look, but uh, you could, if you feel like you went in a little too heavy with your powder or some areas of your face are looking just like a little bit more, I don't know, lifeless since you applied your powder, you could go in with another misting of your setting spray. I did it like 17 times, so I don't feel the need to do that right now. But sometimes what I'll do is just kind of shield like part of my face and then just hit like the outer part like especially on my cheekbones where it should look a little bit more like highlighted naturally with a little bit of fix plus i'll just do that like a really really light misting um, especially if i used a powder highlight and i want it to really like melt into my skin listen i hope this video was helpful please keep in mind that like watching a five even a five minute video of like little tips is not necessarily going to be enough information for you to create what you're looking for there's a reason that we're called makeup artists. There's a lot of steps, okay? It's time consuming. Uh, if you're really, really trying to get something to look like perfection, you gotta take your time with it. But I think we achieved that and hopefully this video helped you. I know a lot of people like, these are tricks that I pretty much use every single time I do my makeup. So I forget that they might be new information for a lot of people and people who watch my videos all the time are again, probably like, yeah, we get it. Like whatever. Uh, but the setting spray in between layers is a really great trick, especially if you need something to last for a long time and you want it to look like your skin. Uh, but just keep in mind, keep in mind those layers, light layers. It's the best way to make it look like, be, it creates this really beautiful luminosity. Um, you can still see like on my cheekbones, you can still see like little freckles and stuff. So then overall, when you're looking at my face, it just looks like, it just looks like my skin, but like flawless. Like obviously I'm wearing makeup, it looks flawless. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helped. If it did, let me know in the comments down below. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications and all that stuff. And let me know what videos you might want to see next. Um, love ya. I'll see you in the next one.